Hello, I'm just out here tinkering. I got some new shop toys to play with, so I got a little two by three. I think it's two by three or two by four machinist square. I used it a few times already, and I got a set of collets for my lathe and mill and stuff. And yes, I know my mill is a number thirty taper. But, these are R8. I bought them mainly for holding stuff in the lathe. So, let's get started and make an adapter for the lathe. And later on we'll make some collet blocks. Some hex and square collet blocks for holding the material on the lathe. They're, the collets are cheap. And... Yeah, this is a full set from 8th inch all the way up to 7 eighths of an inch. And they go much bigger than that up to 1 inch, which is a heck of a lot cheaper than, let's say, an ER40 set, which you got like 100 and quarter for the collets, you got 50 for the chuck, and then you have another 70 for a back plate for my lathe. So by the time you're done, you only have half the parts and you're completely broke. This is a lot better option for me since I only hold smaller pieces. What I'm going to make the adapter for the lathe out of is a piece of knuckle pin from a train. So let's go cut this thing in half. I cut about four inches out, same length as call it, and we'll get started. I also wanted to say thank you to Emma Ritson and John Creasy for hosting the Tips Blitz 2019 event. There was a lot of good event entries, and it was quite a fun event. So, thank you too for posting that and hopefully it happens again next year. If you guys haven't seen the videos, definitely go check them out. What I'm going to do is just face both ends off, get it squared up, and I'm going to indicate the center end to cut the Morse taper 4 for the headstock. It doesn't have to run perfectly true because i got so much material I can just take it off.
and now I gotta indicate the thing in and it should give me cut it back to about here that should give me about four inches to indicate off the taper that way it, the R8 call it can actually fit inside of it and I'll create a sleeve that converts the Morse taper 4 to R8 and then I'll stick the R8 call it's right in the headstock and use them for work holding okay after a few minutes of fiddling with the thing I got it running true all the way down so the compound slide is locked down it's it's at the same angle as the Morse taper 4 and I'll start turning this between dead centers we're turning it between centers for pressure turning so I just took the rod out of the indicator stand and set it on here just for a few minutes. That'll that helps get it indicated in. And as you can see, my points are actually reversed. If I want to indicate something real small in, I'll use this side. But usually, I just flip this side and use this one because it takes the average of everything because if there's scratches or bumps like this thing has it it'll be a little sporadic with this end all you do is just unscrew this end off and reverse it with this one end and it'll work just the same they're both the same threads on most of them and they just unscrew it's just a washer that holds everything in place. See what we're at here. Aiming for one inch, 454 thousandths. I already had the indicator set it. At it. We're right on it. We're one thousandths over some parts. I'm hitting a half a thou. So I'm gonna leave it, let it cool. It'll shrink down to. A little under, which is fine because it's way oversized for my spindle. But this will get me started for the taper I need. Now I can start hogging out the Morse taper for taper itself. It's a bit hot, so I'm going to let it set. 
three over here. As you can see, I turned it down. This is inch and a sixteenth, which is what my bore on my lathe is, because I didn't want to go down to the well dimensions I had and the plans I had, because it would leave a real thin back area. I'd rather have as much meat as I can in the back, then I'll counter bore it after I'm all done. I have a little lip here that I'll use, so I could just face it off later or whatever. But for now, let's take the chuck off and see what it looks like. While I'm waiting on this to cool down, uh, me and a few friends got a, into a discussion on the Discord server. I told them I like 1060 because it machines a lot nicer than the 1045, as you can see. It's kind of rough, and this is the bushing I made for machining the tool cutter grinder wheel hubs. It's 1045, it's out of an old truck axle. This was 1060, which is a knuckle pin off of a train car. Ooh, I'm just waiting on it to cool down. Yeah, it's still pretty hot. And then we'll fit it into the headstock, see how it fits. As you can see, the proof is right here. Very nice and shiny and very dull. Kind of look like a phonograph. This is like a mirror. Had a little bit to cool down. I'm just gonna try to get this off. I've had it off earlier, so it's not super stuck on there right now. Still has a tiny little bit of heat in it, but I'm not. It'll only shrink a few thousands at most. Right now, I'm just trying to test the fit. If I face the bushing off, it'll look good. I left this little bit in case I needed, I screwed up and needed a little extra. But. I don't think I'm going to. Stuck in there pretty good. Face this off real quick and we'll start drilling and boring the pull out for the back end of the collet, which I may have to make a boring bar first. Okay, I just needed a boring bar. I had this bolt sitting here for the tool and cutter grinder. I'll find another bolt for the arm thing for ID boring. I just took the angle grinder and cut into it like that. 
sets off just a little bit off the side. We'll brace it in. I'm just using Safety Sil 45 silver solder. It's real easy to flow, real easy to get it set up. It melts real easy. And lo and behold, I'm out of oxygen again. Meet <sighs> hmm. Plan B. Having a little bit more on to the first extra measure. So I do not want this thing coming undone. It actually looks good. Now let it cool down. And yeah. I just took it into the belt sander and cleaned it up here. Just added some relief to everywhere so that I wasn't trying to push against the other steel and just cleaned it up to a little bit for the boring bar. Ground four flats on it so that I could hold it in the tool post. And so it's indicated square or it's setting square every time. But let's go put this in put it to use. Cut that bore out to fit the collet. I think I got it lined up. I'll snug this up a little bit here to make sure it doesn't move. Check it one last time, but I think I got it. Okay, I got the compound and everything set up at the angle of the taper on the collet. So we'll cut out the taper here. It'll come right to the edge of that chamfer, or it should. And that should be enough to, when it's sucked in, it'll be flush. Let's get started.
it looks about as good as it's going to get right there. I like that. Just get a little deeper here with the file. I'll have to knock the thing back out. That's a good sign. It's locking already. Give it a little touch up with some uh, scotch bright and we'll be done. Really nice finish in it. You can see it's a pretty nice finish in there. You can see the reflection. You cannot ask for a better fit than that. Now for the true test. Go find some 3 8 bar. I found some 7 16 fine thread, threaded bar, and a nut that went on it. I have no idea where it came from, it just was in my scrap pile. And here's the bushing that I made up for when I was doing the, the other adapter that held the tool and cutter grinder wheel adapter. So. Got a 3 8 end mill here just as a test. I went with these collets because I don't really need a lot of through hole stuff, and the only thing I can think of is really really small stuff so if I really need to I could drill a hole in the draw bar just make a new draw bar and put a hole in it yeah one thou run out on this So one thou run out. That's not bad for that stuff compared to a three gel. And that should be good more than good enough for what I do. So stick in a piece of rod and turn it down and see how it holds.
hair is that slick. I can get used to that. <laughs> Okay, it's just a thin sleeve. Works pretty good, actually. Okay, it's just a Morse Taper 4 to R8 adapter. And... Tapers just go right to the back of it. And right to the front. So it's got a bearing surface all the way through. <laughs> there, it's unlocked. I tested it off camera, it uh, blew it up, and it was spotting all the way around, so I didn't really show it. And the video is probably getting long enough. But, yeah, this thing's done. Now I gotta call it adapter for my lathe. Next time I'll work on the um, hex blocks and stuff for the mill and shaper for holding the pieces to cut hex heads or squares or cut slots and stuff in it for holding on the mill and stuff. Alright, I think I'm gonna call it. Thanks for watching. See ya. Also, I made this. It's just a bunch of carbide inserts braced together. They were worn out and junk. The edges were all chipped and they are way too big for my lathe. It's not like I don't have enough of them. So, I braced them all together into a giant triangle and made sure everything was nice and flat across on all sides and just polished it. Now, when I am trying to set up stuff like hexes and stuff on the mill instead of having to find the angle gauge I just put the thing right up against the side and suddenly that's 60 degree right there or 30 degree for the hex These are just TNMT inserts. As you can see, they're pretty chowdered up. But you can use them for setting up the angles and stuff for that if you need a quick and dirty one.